Praise the Lord. Thank you, Father. Blessed be the name of the Lord forever. Thank you, Jesus. We bless you, brothers and sisters, again in the strong and wonderful and glorious name of Jesus the Christ. Praise God. Thank you, Father. We uh, continue on October the 4th here, 2021. This is actually the day after that Jesus was supposed to come within the six-month period according to the false witness, Ralph Stair, was to appear on the earth within six months of his death. Well, six months of Ralph Stair's death was over with as far as the six-month time frame on October the 3rd. Ralph Stair has been proven to be a profound liar, hypocrite, a blasphemer, profane person like Esau. I am going to get into now what God had me do it again. I'm going to focus on James Rice and Ralph Stair again. As we'll get into this, and there you see them, both of them. At the last came two false witnesses. Now, I'm not playing with words, people. You are looking at two false witnesses there behind me. And that's what I'm going to minister about today. As we are, as like the word says of, of Jeremiah about being filled with the Lord's indignation because of what he sees men doing to his word and especially to the profound coming of the Lord Jesus Christ and the preparation and all the things that are to take place before Jesus Christ comes back. All right. We're going to uh, listen now to what Jesus said about his return in Luke 21. Like I said, Matthew 24 and Mark 13. But I'm going to play Luke 21 here. And this is what Jesus said about his return. All right. And as some spake of the temple, how it was adorned with goodly stones and gifts, he said, As for these things which ye behold, the days will come in the which there shall not be left one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And they asked him, saying, Master, but when shall these things be, and what sign will there be when these things shall come to pass? And he said, Take heed that ye be not deceived. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ. And the time draweth near. Go ye not therefore after them. But when ye shall hear of wars and commotions, be not terrified. Amen. For these things must first come to pass, but the end is not by and by. Amen. Then said he unto them, Nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And great earthquakes shall be in divers places, and famines and pestilences, and fearful sights and great signs shall there be from heaven. Pestilences. That's what you see with the COVID and all this stuff that's going on in the world. I will get into that here shortly, another time, about the the way Satan is using sorcery to deceive the whole world. And you can see it's, it's gripping, it's on every side. But before all these, they shall lay their hands on you and persecute you, delivering you up to the synagogues and into prisons, being brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake. And it shall turn to you for a testimony. Settle it therefore in your hearts, not to meditate before what ye shall answer. For I will give you a mouth and wisdom which all your adversaries shall not be able to gainsay nor resist. Wow. See, now that's, it, I often use that uh, when Ralph hired the lawyers for $250,000 and God knows how much other money he gave them people so that he, because of the, his, his uh, being arrested, for molesting a 16-year-old girl and uh, that was vividly seen of him cupping a 12-year-old's breast, schooling her for the years to come. But yet he hired a lawyer. What happened to the Holy Ghost? You see, he didn't have the Holy Ghost because if he did, he wouldn't have had to hire a lawyer. He wouldn't have had to hire somebody else to speak for him. He says, I will give you a mouth and you'll, you'll go to prison for his namesake. I'll get to the scripture. I'll get to the clips here of Ralph popping off about being in jail Jesus was in jail. Jesus was not in jail. 
Jesus was brought before the judgment seat. He was, he was beaten before Pilate's soldiers. He wasn't in jail. Uh, we'll get to that perversion later. Let's go on here because I want to focus here on, on the perversion of the coming of Jesus Christ, how Ralph perverted it, and how James Rice, the other false witness for this time, is given credence to the false witness of Ralph Steer. And ye shall be betrayed both by parents and brethren and kinsfolks and friends. And some of you shall they cause to be put to death. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But there shall not an hair of your head perish. In your patience possess ye your souls. Thank you, Father. And when ye shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. Now, I'll get to this perversion of uh, James Rice hoping that Jesus comes for them uh, back during the uh, Feast of Tabernacles. Now, it, it, you'll hear the delirious delusion, the delirious mind that's impaired from James Rice and how he talked when he first took to speaking there after Ralph's death until he did just recently. And you'll see the delusion the man's under. Profound. But let me uh, just get back to that there. When you see Jerusalem compass with armies, know that the desolation thereof is nigh. That's coming at the end of the three and a half years, not the beginning of it. Because of what it says is, if you, if you read what, if you listen to what Jesus said, he said that when you see Jerusalem compassed with armies, know that the desolation there was not. If you go to Matthew, he says, when you see the desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet standing in a holy place, he said, then let them that are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let them that are on the housetop not come down and take anything out of his house. Such a profound time of destruction and evil that Jesus said, then shall be great tribulation such as never was nor ever shall be. That's coming at the end of the matter, right before the coming of Jesus Christ. But listen to what Jesus says here now. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains. There it is. And let them which are in the midst of it depart out. And let not them that are in the countries enter therein too. He's talking right after you see the desolation, the abomination of desolation. That's why I always go back to the scripture in Daniel. In chapter 11, he says, From the time the daily sacrifice is taken away, and the abomination of desolation set up, there shall be one thousand, a time period now, perfectly described by God in his timing. There shall be 1,290 days. Blessed and holy is he that comes to the 1,335 days. Why? Because the abomination of desolation is the trigger for the last 45 days so that the saints will come to the uh, end of that. Blessed and holy is he that comes to the 1,335 days. Praise God. For these be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. These be the days of vengeance, after the abomination of desolation is set up. These be the days of vengeance, Jesus said, when all things written shall be fulfilled. There's going to be a 45-day period of time when God is going to do the final cleansing of the earth before he comes back. And he's going to cleanse it with fire, people. But woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. For there shall be great distress in the land, and wrath upon this people. See, now that's, we're in a preliminary of that right now. You see, with uh, those with child and give suck in those days, there should be great distress in the land. What do you think is going on with all these vaccines? Great distress going on throughout the land, throughout the world. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword, and shall be led away captive into all nations. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles, until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. And there shall be signs in the sun, and in the moon, and in the stars. And upon the earth, distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. Men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. 
And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth nigh. See, so that goes contrary to what I'm going to play here in just a little bit about James Rice and his perversion of maybe he'll come for us. Uh, all these things have to take place. He says, what Jesus said, when you see these things begin to come to pass, man, look up. Now you know your redemption draweth nigh. Just like I, I mentioned that scripture of uh, Brother Chris there, Isaiah. It says there, and it shall be said in that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him, and he will save us. This is the Lord. Praise God. We have waited for him. We will be glad and rejoice in his salvation. God bless you, Brother Chris. Hope to see your face soon. In Jesus' name is my prayer. All right, let's get back to the two false witnesses now. I just had played the scripture that Jesus talked about in Luke 21 about things that must take place right before he returns. Okay? Now, let's get into the perversion of Ralph with the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ and James Rice. All right. Before we get into what Ralph said about Jesus coming, because we're going we're gonna to go through this very clearly again, very deliberately, of what a liar Ralph Stair was and how he prepared the people for the coming of Satan, not the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, let's get, I'm going to get into this now here. Uh, listen to what James Rice says about the president of the Overcomer Ministry. Because this is a kind of perversion. Anybody that gives any kind of credibility to the perverted spirit on Dennis Larrabee and his whore wife, Rose Larrabee, the Jezebel of the Overcomer, you are going to be damned eternally. Sometimes, Brother Dennis, say, it is of the Lord. Now, what you say, Brother Dennis? It is of the Lord. See, I told you so. I told you so. I told you so. See, now, you see how excited he got? James Rice got there. Listen how excited he got there about Denny now. That's old Dennis Larrabee. The one that pimped his wife to Rose. I mean, pimped his wife Rose to Ralph Stair. I mean, isn't that amazing how excited? Now, why, why wasn't there any kind of enthusiasm or excitement about the coming of Jesus Christ in any of these messages that James Rice spoke after the death of Ralph? Listen to how he gets enthusiastic here, people. Sometimes, Brother Dennis, say, it is of the Lord. Now, what you say, Brother Dennis? It is of the Lord. See, I told you so. I told you so. I told you so. See, what a perversion. It is of the Lord, that's no doubt about it. But to say that it is of the Lord and you're going to be damned, it is of the Lord, you can mark that down. There's no doubt about it. Listen to what James says now, I'm a, and then we'll get into this very clearly here. But listen to James here, what he said about they were ordained. We are the remnant left here by God's divine decree. Not, not our doing, not my doing. By God's divine decree, He have kept us here. Yes. Amen. Yes. Huh? Yes. Ordained us to this time. Yes. Yes. You definitely have been, it is of the Lord, as Dennis popped off. And old James got truly excited there. You don't hear that kind of enthusiasm when he, when he was talking about the coming of Jesus Christ though, at all, as we'll get to that here. A, a very delirious, very uh, destitute, but let, let's listen to what God says about these kind of people being ordained. For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. That's exactly what God says about the overcome ministry with Ralph and James. They were ordained. To that kind of condemnation. Period. And then we'll, we'll listen to what, uh, well, actually, we'll go to the, uh, Deuteronomy 18 again, and then I'm going to uh, 
do what Ralph said about the coming of Jesus Christ. And it shall come to pass that whosoever will not hearken unto my words which he shall speak in my name, I will require it of him. But the prophet which shall presume to speak a word in my name which I have not commanded him to speak, or that shall speak in the name of other gods, even that prophet shall die. Well, you heard that. It also goes on to say he's not going to be feared. But you heard him say that prophet shall die. Let's hear what Ralph said. What God said. One of the first things God told me. He said, I'm going to send you to China. I'm going to send you to the Soviet Union. He said, I'm going to send you to Pope of Rome. He said, they're going to kill you. They, they will kill you. How do I know I'm going to finish that? Because he let me finish the first two. Remember now what, what it said about Deuteronomy again. And it shall come to pass that whosoever will not hearken unto my words which he shall speak in my name, I will require it of him. But the prophet which shall presume to speak a word in my name which I have not commanded him to speak, or that shall speak in the name of other gods, even that prophet shall die. That's exactly what happened to Ralph's there. I don't get any clearer than that, people. Don't get any clearer than that. Let's listen to Ralph again. That's why I'm preaching the way I'm preaching now, because I've told this world what God told me. God he told, told me him a now. a thousand people at a gathering in South Carolina before I go. He told me six months of death, Jesus is coming. Six months of his death, Jesus is coming. We'll get to, to, uh, we'll get to James here in a minute, because I want to focus on James and Ralph now. You hear that? You hear it? So you mark my death. Uh, step mark his summer. death now. Don't let nobody fool you. God Six used months has passed sign. now. He used the death of Christ on the cross as a sign. He sure did. Man, to preach a message like me, it, it always takes the death of the testator to put the strength to his testimony. Well, you heard Ralph's testimony. And it's uh, the death of the testator. That's what these messages are about. The strength of the testimony of Ralph Stair. All right, let's get back to the two false witnesses again. And uh, what Ralph went on to say, first, remember, now he said there's going to be a thousand people gathering, it, it, whatever. It, it talked about it in Jeremiah. But listen to what God told him now, what Ralph said. I know it's going to be my end. God told me you're going to see the Pope, and I will see the Pope. Well, what did Jeremiah say about people like Ralph Stair? Behold, I am against the prophets, saith the Lord, that use their tongues and say, He said. Now, wait a minute. How many years have you heard Ralph Stair say, You don't want to be against? That's because he didn't want you to be for God. God is against lies and perversion. God is against the prophets that say, He saith, and He didn't say it. God is against the prophets that say, He commanded them, and He didn't command them. Period. It's pretty clear. But isn't it obvious? That's one thing Ralph used to always pop out. You don't want to be against. No, I want to be on God's side. I want to be against the things that God's against. Period. And you and me, you should be against the things that God is against. And that's how we live in, people. To separate the profane from the holy. What did it say there? In... Take the precious from the vile. That's what Jeremiah, God said to Jeremiah, thou shalt be as my mouth if you take the precious from the vile. Not if you mingle it together. Because that's what God said. He, put a, he mingled a perverse spirit in this kind of a ministry like the Overcomer ministry. It's got a very perverted spirit there. But uh, remember now what he said now. What, what, what did Ralph say? I know it's going to be my end. God told me you're going to see the Pope, and I will see the Pope. All right, let's go back to Jeremiah. Behold, I am against the prophets, saith the Lord, that use their tongues and say, He saith. Behold, I am against them that prophesy false dreams, saith the Lord, and do tell them, and cause my people to err by their lies and by their lightness. By their lies and their lightness. It's like the thousand people gathering, and you've heard throughout the years, the lightness of Ralph. 
that caused people to lie. And then you hear the likeness even in James Rice. Same exact spirits out of him. Yet I sent them not, nor commanded them. I think it's Therefore clear. they shall not profit this people at all, saith the Lord. That's right. There's going to be no profit to this people at all, saith the Lord. Listen to what Ralph said here now. There ain't no way Christianity is going to endure on this earth after my death. On the one reminder to all of you that Christ is alive and he's coming again. See what a lie that is? He's the one reminder that Christ is alive? What happened to the Holy Ghost? What happened to God in heaven? What happened to God's spirit on the earth? He's the one man that Christ is alive and that he's coming again? No, the word of God said he's coming again. You heard me play what Jesus said he's, when he's going to come. And he's going to come when he said he's, when he he's going to come. Right exactly at the same time, the same words that came out of Jesus Christ's mouth is the exact time that Jesus is coming back. Period. Not coming back when Ralph said six months within, within six months of his death. Um, all right. Uh, here, here's what it says here about even men like Ralph Stair, but this is primarily James Rice. A sword is upon the liars, and they shall dote. A sword is upon the mighty men, and they shall be dismayed. Let's talk about men like Ralph, and, and primarily now I'll focus on James Rice, where doting means to be delirious, to have your intellect impaired, so that the mind wanders or wavers, to decay. Let's listen to the very first words out of James Rice's mouth after Ralph Stair's death. And tell me if this is not a prime example of the scripture that you just heard. Listen again to Jeremiah and then I'll play James. A sword is upon the liars and they shall dote. All right. Well, brother, he said he was going to stand before the Pope. He talked about... Uh, uh, the, what did he talk about? He talked about many things. I mean, you see an example there of, 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 of somebody that's delirious, their mind's wandering or wavers, their intellect is impaired. He couldn't even tell you what Ralph was going to say about standing before the Pope. Actually, he could, but he didn't, he, he didn't know how to, how to present the lie to you, to, to the people there. That's why you hear, we'll get on into this, this, this clearly, this demonstration of Satan working through a man like James Rice, promoting the lies of Ralph Stair. All right, uh, listen to what James, he, he couldn't get out what he said about the Pope now. Amen. Talk about the thunders. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he did talk about the thunders too, which we'll get into that here in, in a little bit. But the thing is, is that, did you hear that, what he did about talking about the coming of the, of, of the, of the Lord that R.G. said he would stand before the Pope? Now, remember now, here's what, uh, here's what Ralph said about the Pope of Rome. The first thing God told me, he said, I'm going to send you to China, I'm going to send you to the Soviet Union, he said, I'm going to send you to Pope of Rome, he said, now they're going to kill you. Then they will kill you. How do I know I'm going to finish that? Because he let me finish the first two. I know it's going to be my end. God told me you're going to see the Pope, and I will see the Pope. Uh, why didn't James talk about that when he said this? Well, brother, he said he was going to stand before the Pope. He talked about... Uh, uh, the, what did he talk about? He talked about many things. Yeah, and that was one of the many things here that I just played for you that James couldn't talk about. He talked about many things, but, but, but to stand before the Pope, let's hear what Ralph said again. When I'm ready, I'll do like Paul. I'll let you all know. I will. I'll say I'm ready now. And folks have been listening to me the last couple months to hear me. They already hear me starting to say that. They've already heard me start to say, uh, I'm about ready now. I'm about ready now. Got one more journey, one more place to go. 
it all comes to my head. Now, that was in 2008, 13 years ago, people. He's about ready to go. It, see, now he's talking about the... Hey, see, that's what I said with James. What a profound, delirious, demented mind that's so intellectually impaired that he can't talk about the things that Ralph actually said. And after my departure, after my departure, Jesus coming. After my departure. You say, I don't believe that. You might guess. Well, that's true. After his departure, Jesus is coming, but not in the time frame he said. Jesus Christ is coming after the working of, of Satan and men like Ralph and James Rice. All right? Here's one more little clip from 2008 that Ralph said was to take place that God told him. I already told you that they already took out the first horn, which was Iraq, and the second horn come up higher, which is Iran. And before this summer's over, they're going to take out Iran. Hell is going to break loose. Now, mind you now, that was back in 2008, people. All right. Let's uh, go back to James Rice again. Because it... I'm going to get into the, the the thing about James. Now, this is what James Rice, this is how he talked when he first started to speak after Ralph's death, right? Well, brother, he said he was going to stand before the Pope. He talked about uh, uh, the, what did he talk about? He talked about many things. Amen. Talked about the thunders. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he talked about the thunders too, which we'll get into, because Re James Rice didn't hear a word he said about the thunders either. Even though he pops off, it's just like he didn't hear a word he said about the Pope. Going to see the Pope, have his head cut off, and Jesus coming. I want you to hear an abominable prayer by Maurice Spencer to just show you the depths of this perversion that's coming out of this place. Another day to be in the tabernacle, Lord God, Hallelujah. to worship you, Lord God. Thank you, Father. For God worthy, O oh Lord. Oh, yes. Bless you, Lord God, for the voice of the prophet, Lord God. Still alive. That's the word of God. Amen. Oh, yes, that will never, oh, yes, heaven and earth will pass away, but thy word will never, never pass away. Hallelujah. So bless you, Lord God, for the voice. No. R.G. Stern did not have the word of God in his mouth. He was not the voice of God, as, as you heard that abominable prayer right there. Not even close. All that had come out of R.G. Stern's mouth was lies and deceit, seduction, gaslighting, whatever. But it was a perversion of God's word, period. But that's the kind of stuff that's been going on there since Ralph died. And that's at the, at the reins of Dennis and Rose. Come on, you got the president and vice president over conference ministry. Two satanic entities that are profound liars themselves in the depths of Satan. Ahab and Jezebel. I mean, you don't get any clearer than that. Or Balaam and Jezebel. Balaam loved the wages of unrighteousness, people. Now, let's get... Now, remember now. You heard James talk about Ralph seeing the Pope. But he couldn't tell you what he actually... What Ralph said about going to see the Pope and Jesus coming within six months, which happened to be the time frame passed yesterday. Today's October the 4th. Listen to this now. This coming of Jesus is not a popular message for the world. Right. And it's going to go forth in more intensity, yes, right. more comprehensively. Consequences for this gospel going forth with this greater intensity, Amen. with this greater coverage. Right. Greater comprehension. You people hear that? This message is going to go out with greater comprehension? Greater intensity? The only intensity I heard was when, when, when you heard me play that, uh, uh, this here. This is about, this is the greater intensity that, uh, James Rice was talking about. Sometime, Brother Dennis, say, it is of the Lord. Now what you say, Brother Dennis? It is of the Lord. See, I told you so. I told you so. I told you so. Why isn't there a lifting up of a voice about the coming of Jesus Christ like that? Like you heard him uh, 
flattering Dennis Larrabee. That's all that was right there. Profound flattering of the president of the Overcomer Ministry. Why? He's got to bow down to Dennis. There's no doubt about it. Dennis is at the range. He's the president, so he controls everything. And he was controlling Ralph Stair to his whore wife, Rose Larrabee, who played the whore to Ralph. The strange woman. I, we'll get into that in our time. I told you that's, that's an entirely group of messages about the perversion of Ralph and Rose, okay? With Dennis, the man behind the curtain. All right. Uh, you heard that. Greater comprehension. Consequences are going to be. Uh, let me see what I was looking for here on this. Uh, All right, here's another one of uh, Ralph's talking about the coming of the Lord. <sighs> well, Buster, that's the way to go. If God takes you out of the way, we'll just keep on going. No, when God takes you out of the way, Jesus is coming. <laughs> so if you think I'm being fighting, being taken out of the way, you're out of your head. The Apostle Peter used this terminology. I must surely put off oh, yes. this tabernacle yes. as my Lord did tell me. Yes. Now, what, what, what did it, Ralph say that the Lord did tell him that what is going to happen is? I know it's going to be my end. God told me you're going to see the Pope, and I will see the Pope. I wonder if that lines up with what I just had Ralph just said. <sighs> well, Buster, that's the way to go. If God takes you out of the way, we'll just keep on going. No, when God takes you out of the way, Jesus is coming. <laughs> so if you think I'm being fighting, being taken out of the way, you're out of your head. The Apostle Peter used this terminology. I must surely put off oh, yes. this tabernacle yes. as my Lord did tell me. Yes. Do you know how many things I, I had actually played by Ralph himself? How the Lord told him there'd be a thousand people at a gathering. There'd be 200 people living in the community. I got a list. It, it, the list is unbelievable of the, of the heresies that Ralph Stair ministered with throughout the years and all the lies that the man spoke. But what did James Rice say now? Oh, Pastor, I don't remember him saying that. That's well, right. I know, I know we have our selective in what we remember the prophet yes. saying. Right. That's exactly James Rice is the same same condition that he's talking in. He's selective in what the prophet said. I mean, why not? The Lord hath mingled a perverse spirit in the midst thereof. I think it don't get too much clearer than that now. Uh, let's listen to what Ralph said now about the day and the hour of the coming of the Lord. Oh, I wish I could make you understand this. We're going to know the day. Yes. I won't be here. The Lord made it very clear that I'll be killed a few months before he comes. But I'm going to tell my people before I get killed where he's going to come. I'll tell them the day, and I'll even tell them the hour. Now, I wonder if he, if, see, he didn't tell anybody that. That's a profound lie. That's why you, you, I'll get to the last thing that James Rice said about the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, which, which, which is like the capstone of this, all this perversion. But listen to what Ralph said. Well, I don't believe you. Then don't stay around me. I'm going to tell my folk. I said, look, now I'm making my last trip now. I won't come back from this one. But on such and such a day, you, you, you make sure you're wide awake. He's making his last trip now. On such and such a day. Oh, Pastor, I don't remember him saying that. I know, I know we have, are selective in what we remember the prophet saying. You're facing the eastern sky because that's where Christ is coming from, the eastern sky. 
as the lightning shineth from the east to the west. That's where he's coming from. He's going to light up the sky with a clap of thunder. He's going to raise the dead. And, and, and you won't prevent me. I'll be right there. Uh, I'll be right there. I said, hurry up, you slow pokes. <laughs> Paul said, you which are alive remain will not prevent them which are asleep. Mm, that's the reason why I'll be able to die so easy. That's one of the things I know that God is going to make it so close to me. You know, when he told me I was going to die, he told me my age. And I got a little upset about it at first, you know, because it's very young in comparison to what people live. And I, I said, why oh, so young? He said, you don't believe what you preach? You're not going to get to 70 no how, so don't worry about it. What? He didn't, I couldn't even get to 70. Oh, Pastor, I don't remember him saying that. I know, I know, we have, are selective in what we remember the prophet saying. Right. You see, I'm not playing games here, people. I'm just showing you the depths of these lies and deceit and ungodliness of all their ungodly speeches, what they have ungodly spoken. That's all this is all about. But it's just, it's just amazing how, how the light can magnify such depths of darkness. How great is that? Did Jesus said, if that light that is in you be darkness, then how great is the darkness? That's what you see here. The light in these people is darkness, and how great is that darkness? Retirement. You're not even going to get to 60, boy. I'm coming. Amen. Now, if you know how old I am, you know how many more years we got. The secret. <laughs> not a day goes by that I don't think about the age that God told me. God told me what age. He didn't tell me what month. He didn't tell me. Uh... Now, wait a minute. God told him. Behold, I am against the prophets, saith the Lord, that use their tongues and say, He saith. All right. Uh, let's do this one here by James now. This is one of, one of the latest uh, things that James spoke about because of the fact that he was he, could, he couldn't speak about the things that Ralph talked about except what you hear him say right here. Let's not fall into the trap of trying to vindicate Brother Stair and seeing that everything that he said All by, right now. by the letter All right. materialized. All right now. Yeah, that's right. The letters right. be faithful that he's prepared us and taught us. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, and what he said by the Spirit Amen. will happen. I think I said it right. That you said it right. Be faithful in what he prepared and taught you by the Spirit. And his Spirit was nothing but of, nothing of lies and deceit. And that's what you've been taught and prepared for. To receive the Antichrist. To receive the lies of the devil. You don't listen and believe these lies. Here's something Ralph popped off about that is so very true. Listen to this. You know something? If a man's a liar and he speaks the truth, then what's he done? He turned the truth into a lie. You understand that? You understand that? So not only should you know what you hear, but you should know who you hear it from. See, and that's what I've been doing, presenting you. Not only should you know what you hear, but know who you hear it from. You should know what you hear, but what, who you hear it from. And all you've been hearing is presentation of lies and, and corruption of the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what this is all about. As far as what I'm getting into in, this, in, in, in these things here. It all has to do with the actual coming according to the word of God, of God sending his son back to this earth. That's what it's all about, people. Um, let's see here. Uh, all right. In this part, what I'm going to do is show you the impaired mind of James Rice. Remember now. All right, let me do this one here first. What James said about the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. The coming of Jesus is not a popular message for the world. Right. And it's going to go forth in more intensity. Yes, Lord. More comprehensively. Consequences for this gospel going forth with this greater intensity. Amen. With this greater coverage. Right. Greater comprehension. 
Yeah, there's consequences for your lies, James. That's all there is to it. And the people that listen to you and, and, and give you any kind of credibility at all, there is going to be severe consequences, which is already being manifested by God, by his hand stretched forth over your over Kennedy, South Carolina in this hour. Now, let's listen to this more comprehension, more intensity. This is the only thing about Jesus coming that that James talked about in the times that I've 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 heard the little excerpts that have been put out by RGStare.com. Listen to what he says about the Feast of Tabernacles and how impaired this man's mind is with the description of the Feast of Tabernacles. Well, we'd like to, uh, you know, gather some next week. Hallelujah. We'd like to do it. They'd the like Feast to do of it. Tr- uh, Tabernacles. Listen how smooth that began is. Began Tuesday. Wait a minute. The Feast of Tabernacles began Tuesday when the Tuesday didn't even come yet. I'm telling you, you talk about an impaired mind. But listen to what he says as he goes on in this delusion that he's under. We'll, we'll be here, won't we? We aren't going anywhere? No. <clears throat> Amen. So uh, we'll be here for the feast. Mm-hmm. Maybe he'll come for us. Huh? Maybe he'll come for us? Huh? Does that, that, that sound just like what, what James said here now. This coming of Jesus is not a popular message for the world. And it's going to go forth in more intensity, yes, more comprehensively. Uh, the coming of Jesus Christ being more comprehensively more. Does that sound like that? Well, we'd like to, uh, you know, gather some next week. Hallelujah. We'd like to do it. Yeah. The Feast of tr- uh, like Tabernacles began Tuesday. The Feast of Trump Tabernacles began to... I know sometimes, you know, your words get a little twisted up. But the Feast of Tabernacles began Tuesday when Tuesday didn't even come yet. But you hear, is there, is there intensity? Is there a greater comprehension in, in what he said about the coming of Jesus Christ? The coming of Jesus is not a popular message for the world. Actually, it is. Because, I, like I mentioned before... Tim LaVey and uh, LaHaye or whatever his name is with that book uh, Left Behind or The Secret Rapture and all that, they, they, that's very popular to the world. They, they make merchandise on, on the coming of Jesus Christ. How about uh, The Passion of Christ with Mel Gibson and that perversion? How much, how much money did they make? How much money did they make on uh, uh, The Ten Commandments and all these other things that they put out over the years? Huh? Nothing but perversion, but they merchandise. It's very popular with the world now. They don't believe the coming of Jesus Christ, but they'll mock it and 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 and, and merchandise it. And it's going to go forth in more intensity, yes, Lord. more comprehensively. Consequences for this gospel going forth. More intensity, more comprehensively, and there's consequences, like I said. With this greater intensity. Amen. With this greater coverage. Right. Greater comprehension. All right, let's listen to the greater comprehension, greater coverage, and great intensity that James uses. He didn't use the same kind of intensity he did with Denny. Now, when he was saying, hey, it's of the Lord, I told you so. Jesus is coming, I told you so. Where's the intensity? See, these people are perverters, they're liars. They're under a strong delusion, but that whatever, that's God's that's in God's hands. Listen to this great intensity now, greater comprehension. Well, we'd like to, uh, you know, gather some next week. That's pretty comprehensive. And it's getting more intense now. Hallelujah. We'd like to do it. Yeah. The Feast of tr- uh, Tabernacles began Tuesday. We'll, we'll be here. We'll, we are going- now that, that's pretty uh, comprehensive. How impaired the man's mind is. Now his mind wanders and wavers when he's talking because first of all the, the Feast of Tabernacles did not began Tuesday because Tuesday didn't come yet. But then again you know, I mean, just listen, there's no intensity there's no greater comprehension the way he talks about Jesus coming for them. Maybe it's the secret rapture he's talking about. Going anywhere? They're not going anywhere. So, uh, we'll be here for the feast. Mm-hmm. Maybe he'll come for us. Huh? Now, you notice that he didn't say maybe he'll come 
uh, as a visitation in his spirit, but uh, as far as that goes, but it, it, maybe he'll come for us. No, he didn't come for them. He's not coming for a liar. He's not coming for a hypocrite. He's not coming back to the earth except in flaming fire, taking vengeance on all them that know not God and obey not the gospel of Jesus Christ. Period. I think it don't get any clearer than that, brothers and sisters. Uh, but then, you know, you got James Rice. Here's what he pops off about uh, Ralph again. And the man of God spent his life getting the people ready for the coming of the Lord. Yes, he did. Are we not going to be ready? Are we going to dishonor him? Uh, you don't have to worry about dishonoring Ralph. He did enough of that by his adultery. When it says adultery, you, he that commits adultery lacks understanding, and he destroys his soul. A wound and dishonor shall he get, and his reproach shall not be wiped away. That's like at that time when Dennis Larry come popping off to the brothers. He goes, what an honor it be for my wife to lay with the prophet. I mean, that, it don't get any clearer than that. That's the president of the overcome ministry now, with words that come out of his mouth like that. I knew right then that man was, was full of hell. In fact, I even called him the monkey man. And one time when I did that to his face, you know what he started doing? He started walking around like a monkey. Every time I seen him, he'd start look, acting like a monkey. He, he didn't have to act like one. The spirit of the monkey was all over the man. It still is. But just like I said, though, how he, he said to, the, to the, these brothers that time, this was back around 2004, 2003, somewhere in that area, that he said it would be an honor for the prophet to lay with his wife. No. You see, that's, that's how far back this perversion. This sodomite spirit has gripped men like Ralph Stair in the overcoming ministry. And that's what another thing that Ralph was totally immersed in sodomite sexual perversion. Period. And it's like I mentioned before about the pornography. Come on, you don't watch pornography for years. You tell me you got a, your, your heart's right with God? You ain't gonna lie on God like that. That's why God killed him. Um Let's hear what Ralph said about his lies. See, I, I try to do my best that I don't make boo-boos anymore. Because I, I, I say things and people hold me to them. Boo-boos? When you say that you have the, uh, the Word of God is in you, listen to what Ralph said now about his boo-boos. You see what happened as I'm talking, she's so concerned about a cart that she's right in the middle of me talking, yeah. she goes and cries about a cart. So she wasn't listening to me, was she? And that's what irks me. When you folks find things to do that seems more important yes. than hearing the word come out of my mouth. Yes. Thank you, Father. And the Bible says, you live by every yes. word. Yes. Every you hear by every word that comes out of Ralph's mouth. Now, wait a minute now. He just said, I just played that for you, what he said that is, uh, what comes out of his mouth is boo-boos. You know, people hold him to what he says. When, at the same time, you hear James Rice in the background saying, amen, amen, to every word that comes out of his mouth that should be listened to. But then again, you got, here's another one of James Rice popping off about Given uh, flowers to the prophet. You know, it's shameful when we play the broadcast 24 hours a day and we have radios in our pockets and, and all these things and we still don't hear what the prophet said. Here's something the prophet said, James. You know something? If a man's a liar and he speaks the truth, then what's he done? He turned the truth into a lie. You understand that? Right. You understand that? Amen. So not only should you know what you hear, but you should know who you hear it from. Uh, James, I hope you heard that. Well, you did hear it. That's why you don't talk about the things you heard from Ralph, because you know that he was a liar. Period. It's just like Ralph said about every word out of his mouth must be heard. But... Then again, you got James. Oh, Pastor, I don't remember him saying that. I know, I know, we have, are selective in what we remember the prophet saying. Right. 
That's, you know, why they're selective in hearing what the prophet is saying? Because he spoke lies and the spirit was upon him was put upon him by God. The Lord hath mingled a perverse spirit in the midst thereof. That's about as clear as it gets, brothers and sisters. Well, I'm just trying to present a little bit of James here as far as uh, how James... Now, remember now, this is what James said just recently. By not giving vent to the words that Ralph said, and he says according to the letter, but it's according to the spirit that Ralph said things by the letter. Let's not fall into the trap of trying to vindicate Brother Stair and seeing that everything that he said All by, right now. by the letter All right. materialized. All right now. Yeah, that's right. The letters be faithful that he's prepared us and taught us. Hallelujah. And what he said by the Spirit. Amen. Will that's it. I think I said it right that time. What he prepared and taught them by the Spirit will happen. Here's one of those things that Ralph said by the Spirit that was that was supposed to take place before he died. That's why I'm preaching the way I'm preaching now, because I've told this world what God told me. He told me there'd be a thousand people at a gathering in South Carolina before I go. God told him there would be a thousand people at a gathering before he goes. Behold, I am against the prophets, saith the Lord, that use their tongues and say, He said. That's pretty clear about what God said there, about what Ralph said. He told me six months of dead Jesus coming. Six months of his death that Jesus was coming. And it shall come to pass that whosoever will not hearken unto my words which he shall speak in my name, I will require it of him. But the prophet which shall presume to speak a word in my name which I have not commanded him to speak, or that shall speak in the name of other gods, even that prophet shall die. That's exactly what happened to Ralph Stair. It doesn't get much clearer than that, people. God put these scriptures in my heart just in the last few days. I didn't go, I didn't, wasn't searching for him. I, was, I look up certain words and all of a sudden I start reading. It's like, my God, that's how God does things with me. He'll put a word in my heart. I start looking what the word is. And then all of a sudden I'll start seeing the scriptures that, that back up the word. It's like, wow, bless you, Father. It's just like Jeremiah said, the, the word of God is like fire shut my bones. When he starts opening these things up to me, I have to go ahead and minister the way he has me ministering through his word. You hear that? So you mark my death by the death of the sign. Don't let nobody fool you. God uses death as a sign. He uses death of Christ on the cross as a sign. Man, to preach a message like me, it, it always takes the death of the testator to put the strength to his testimony. All right. That's the truth. The death of this testator, well, stare. The death of the testator put strength to his testimony of all the things you heard me play his testimony of. Oh, surely, all them things that he said. That's just, that, that's just what they used to say, the tip of the iceberg, people. The iceberg is what sank the Titanic. God sank the ministry of R.G. Stair on April the 3rd, 2021, even though they're still on the radio. It doesn't really matter. It's Ichabod, as far as God's in his eyes. Here's what Rice said about Ralph again. We are the proof of the prophet's ministry. We are. They are. We are the seal. They're the seal. His, his ministry. See, he was going to say perfection. It's just like Ralph, when Ralph said, uh, when, when Andrea said, why did you squeeze my butt? And then Ralph said, just to see how you'd re- and then he stopped from saying react, said to make you show out. But he actually w was saying the word react. Just like you heard Rice say there, they are the seal of the prophet's ministry, he went on to say. But he said per ministry, perfection. They are the seal of his lies. There's no doubt about it. 
And that's all you're going to hear from now, here on out. Nothing but lies and perversion coming out of the Overcome Ministry. Uh, maybe Dennis will uh, rise up and start speaking. He's behind. He's, at, he's the man behind the curtain now. Let's send it a witness of James again. We're the witnesses that uh, God has sent the prophet <coughs> to reclaim the message. Hallelujah. And we are those that believe the message. Amen. We're endeavoring to stand fast in that. They actually, he, you believe that? He said he believed the message? Uh Here's the message that Ralph preached there, James. Well, the first thing God told me, he said, I'm going to send you to China, I'm going to send you to the Soviet Union, he said, I'm going to send you to Pope of Rome, he said, and then they're going to kill you. They, they will kill you. How do I know I'm going to finish that? Because he let me finish the first two. Well, that's one of the things that uh, James said that uh, they're witnesses of? We're the witnesses that uh, God has sent the prophet. <coughs> To reclaim the message. Hallelujah. And we are those that believe the message. Amen. We're endeavoring to stand fast in that. Here's the message again, James. That's why I'm preaching the way I'm preaching now, because I've told this world what God told me. He told me there'd be a thousand people at a gathering in South Carolina before I go. Uh, I wonder. Well, I don't wonder. Uh, I don't wonder about it. Oh, Pastor, I don't remember him saying that. I know, I know, we have, are selective in what we remember the prophet yes, saying. Right. He told me six months I'm dead, Jesus is coming. You hear that? So you mark my death by the death of the sign. Oh, Pastor, I don't remember him saying that. I know, I know, we have, are selective in what we remember the prophet yes, saying. Right. Don't let nobody fool you. God uses death as a sign. Did he use the death of Christ on the cross as a sign? Man, to preach a message like me, it, it always takes the death of the testator to put the strength to his testimony. Well, that gets pretty clear, brothers and sisters, that you hear the perversion of James Rice, and what I'll do is, is this is the this is the spirit that God put on James Rice in the Overcomer Ministry after the death of Ralph Starr, even though Ralph Starr operated in the same spirit as you have seen it from time to time. James Rice personified and perfected the spirit that God put on him in Jeremiah 50. A sword is upon the liars, and they shall dote. A sword is upon the mighty men, and they shall be dismayed. That's exactly like I mentioned before. A sword is upon the liars and they shall dote. Their minds will be impaired. Here's a, a closing an example of the mind that was impaired. Just listen to the man talk and tell me if he's not a doter. Tell me if the, uh, Jeremiah chapter 50 is not being fulfilled right before your very eyes and ears. Well, brother, he said he was going to stand before the Pope. He talked about uh, uh, the. What did he talk about? He talked about many things. Amen. Talked about the thunders. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, we're going to talk about the thunders here shortly. But that's just an amazing thing right there about the perversion of the coming of Christ. It, where there's so much involved with it, with James Rice and uh, Ralph Stair, when James Rice himself and nobody else even there will talk about exactly what Ralph actually said about the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, coming after his death that he had to face from the hands of the Pope of Rome. It, it didn't materialize. Just like all his lies about the uh, 1988, we're going to have a nuclear war with Russia. Reagan wasn't going to finish his term and the economy was going to collapse. Just like 
Jesus Christ was coming before the year 2000, but yet he didn't say that one time. Yet, he said that if he doesn't come by the year 2000, you could call the Bible a lie. That's because Ralph Stair never believed the Bible, people. He was a liar from the beginning. It's like his father the devil, just like James Rice. You know? It's just like, uh, well, whatever. God is said clearly, Ichabod, to the Overcome Ministry and James Rice. So we just want to bless you, brothers and sisters, again. In the strong and glorious name of Jesus the Christ, may he set and make you free from this time we live in of all the deprivation and depravity of lies by the spirit of lies that's being put out by Satan on every side. Remember, Satan's going to come in like a flood. And that's exactly what he's doing. He's, he, he, he's using, you see throughout the whole world, the, the flood of lies that are going out about, about the pestilence and the sorcery with their medicines and everything else. It's going to get, hey, evil men and seducers are going to wax worse and worse. That includes, like I said, Dennis and Rose Larrabee, evil men, James Rice, and seducers like Rose Larrabee, the vice president of the Overcome Ministry, are going to wax worse and worse. And you watch how much worse they start waxing as these days proceed after the time frame that Ralph Stair set out for his own demise and his own fulfilling. So may God bless the words of your heart, brothers and sisters. In Jesus' name is my prayer. Till we meet again, amen.